Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the AME Food Testing Show. Today's topic, cold plasma as a foodborne pathogen kill step. Today's guest, Kevin M. Keener, Professor of Food Science at Purdue University, Department of Food Science. He received his bachelor's and master's degree from Ohio State University and his PhD degree in food process engineering from Purdue University. His research has been primarily in the area of non-invasive quality measurement techniques and novel food processing technologies. His specific research projects include NMR, MRI methods for food processing, food applications for radiant frying technology, food applications for non-thermal plasma technology, and characterization of antimicrobial activity in shell eggs with carbon dioxide treatment. He's had numerous awards and honors, numerous patents, a large number of publications. Welcome now, Dr. Kevin Keener, Professor, Food Science, Purdue University. Dr. Keener? Uh, thank you, Andy. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. We're very excited about today's discussion. Can we begin with a very general question? What are foodborne pathogens? I'm sure. Foodborne pathogens uh, could be bacteria, could be viruses, um, principally things that you would uh, hear about would be uh, bacteria, for example, that would make you sick. Uh, everybody hears of the E. coli. There are certain kinds of E. coli of bacteria type. Um, O157H7 is one that's there. Also, Salmonella is another uh, group of bacteria. There's over 2,300 different kinds of Salmonella, and all of those are potential pathogens. Pathogens are particular bacteria or viruses that, that make us sick. And so foodborne means that they're transmitted through food, carried on food, and, and that's how we uh, end up getting sick much of the time. What are or what is the traditional method to kill foodborne pathogens? Well, the, the most common method is heat. Uh, all uh, bacteria, there's a certain temperature point at which they can no longer exist. And so principally how we uh, control these is that foods have low levels of contamination naturally through our production processes, handling processes. And so one of the most common is to be able to cook something. So if you think of taking the chicken and cooking the chicken or your hamburger, uh, similarly, even for things like baking of breads and things like that, um, the raw ingredients at times, flours and such, have been uh, documented to have things like pathogens in there. Uh, and so heating things up is the traditional method for killing. In uh, more recent years, there's been a significant investigation into other alternatives. And folks may be familiar with like irradiation. Irradiation is where you apply a high energy uh, wave, so very little total power delivered, but it's able to break bonds. And so irradiation, think of x-rays. In essence, if you took a food and you put x-rays on it and you x-rayed it a significant number of times, literally thousands to hundreds of thousands, that amount of energy would not heat the food, but it would produce a situation where the bacteria would be unable to replicate due to a, a break in the uh, DNA. Uh, in bacteria, they replicate uh, in a process where they divide, uh, and so that would prevent them from dividing. Excellent. I understand you have developed in your research a particular skill set in cold plasma technology. Can you describe that to our listeners, which are primarily food production, food safety, food quality, <coughs> and food security managers? Um, sure. The, the plasma or cold plasma technology is, is kind of a novel area. And plasma, plasma itself is, is historical in that it's, it's always around us. Um, the physics definition of plasma refers to it as the fourth state of matter. And what it's, or how it's defined is, it's defined as an ionized gas. And so the sun, for instance, would be considered a thermal plasma or high temperature plasma. 
And a high temperature plasma is one where you have free electrons in um, concert with gas molecules of similar temperatures. And so free electrons have temperatures in the range of thousands, tens of thousands of degrees. So the sun would be a thermal plasma. Cold plasmas are those where the electrons still at those range of ten thousands of degrees, but the rest of the gas would remain in a, um, a low temperature or non-equilibrium, uh, so like room temperature, for example. <clears throat> In our um, process here for cold plasma, what we're doing is we're actually able to create this ionized gas, and in doing so, we can do that without significantly increasing the temperature of the gas itself. So we take the gas molecules, things like oxygen or nitrogen or carbon dioxide, and we literally can break those down into single elemental ions and charged molecules. Um, and so if the temperature of that bulk gas isn't changing significantly compared to that electron when you generate the free electrons. That's referred to as a cold plasma. And so the other point to plasmas that we're working with are atmospheric because pressure is also an important factor. And the way we're doing that is under atmospheric conditions. There's a lot of cold plasma technology that's used under vacuum conditions. That's how they make the plasma TVs and they make a lot of the electrical circuit boards is under vacuum it's able to control and, and they, can, they can alter surface properties of things like the, the underlayment uh, for the circuit board that allows then the, the metal film to be laid down very precisely. Uh, and so the cold plasma technology that, that we have or what we're working on is, is we're able to take a gas, ionize a gas, break it into these ions and reactive molecules, uh, many of which have bactericidal properties. So this cold plasma gas kills the pathogens of interest. How was cold plasma discovered? Um, well, it's, it's kind of a, it, it, it gets lost and then rediscovered. And so uh, one of the things that historically plasma is around us in, in the universe, um, considering that the physics side of it says that, you know, the highest percentage of solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas. Plasmas is the highest percentage of all of the known substance in the universe. Uh, when we look on Earth, we don't find much of it, but for instance, the northern lights, that, that's an atmospheric plasma. Um, lightning is an atmospheric plasma. Lightning is a high energy charged gas, uh, literally that's unable to conduct the electricity. And so it's been around us. Um, the discoveries of atmospheric cold plasmas, um, I can go back literally to the turn of the, the 19th um, hundreds, and there was actually patents related to applying high voltages to different kinds of gases to manipulate the composition of those, and then the effect on processing of different types of materials. So at least since the 1900s, it's been recognized. The original work that was documented in regards to ionization and generation of, of things would go back into the 1860s. Uh, there, was a, there was an awareness or recognition if you took and applied a high voltage across air, you would create ozone. And so as, in essence, ozone generation, that process historically of applying a high voltage would be a plasma generation. And then that was kind of rediscovered back in the 70s and then into the 80s and the 90s where folks said, hey, this has a lot of potential here because we're able to create unique molecules of different energetic levels. And we can do that very efficiently because we don't have to apply significant amounts of heat. It's not a thermal process. It's more of an electrical process. And so that's then led to kind of a rediscovery of, of the applications for plasma technology in the 21st century. Excellent. What has recent research shown as an effective food processing technology? Are we able to apply these concepts to food processing? Um, well, we can, and, and that's part of where the work that we're doing along with other groups around, around the world, um, the technology that we've developed here within our laboratory is the cold plasma technology, which we can do inside of a container or a sealed package. And, and that's somewhat unique. Um, up to this point, a majority of the 
uh, active researchers on cold plasmas have been creating jet. So in essence, you could think of a jet being, uh, you know, just a high velocity airstream that passes through some type of a high voltage field, and then out of the end of that jet um, would be these plasma, so to speak, clouds. And within that, it would contain these reactive molecules of different kinds. And that's primarily what's been done for the last 20, 30 years. Uh, there's a process called a corona discharge, and a corona is a type of plasma, and that's been used to treat packaging films uh, to manipulate surface properties. And so that process, there's a jet of this plasma that comes out, exposes the film as the film rolls very quickly through this cloud. It, it alters surface properties, makes them more amenable to uh, putting ink on there and so on. And then in our work, what we've been doing is we actually took that concept and said, okay, can we do it inside of a package without putting anything in the package other than the gas and the food product? And that's kind of the uniqueness that, that we've been able to demonstrate. And through that, there's some advantages that are unique and I think make the technology in the concept that we've kind of designed much more amenable to the food industry from the standpoint of it's in the package, so it's self-contained which allows a much longer exposure to the plasma species than just running them underneath some type of a plasma jet. And, and so in our work, what we've demonstrated is we can get very high reductions, uh, four, five, six, even, even to the point of sterilization, which would be up to uh, 10 to 12 log reductions of these pathogenic bacteria on food products inside of that finished package. And so that's kind of an exciting area that we're doing a lot of work to try to understand why and how it's happening. Um, and, and that's kind of where we are in the process. But it does have a lot of potential, I think, for many different applications in the food industry because it's not a heating process. So you can retain many of those heat-sensitive nutrients, uh, minimize color changes and things like that with the, project, the pro produce or uh, whatever the product might be. Uh, whereas typically the alternative has historically been heat. So you think of canning something in a can, for example. Well, Dr. Keener, I'm going to note in your web description that part of your duties are for extension, providing food entrepreneur workshops and technical assistance, providing HACCP and sanitary workshops for food companies, responding to inquiries on food processing and food regulations, I'll also note that you are a PE, a professional engineer. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, I am a licensed engineer. Yep. So let me ask, with those couching remarks, what is the potential for food plasma technology to be engaged in food production? Um, I think from, from the scientific perspective, things look very promising. Uh, we haven't encountered a situation in our work yet that we haven't been able to show significant improvement over the existing alternatives. Um, where, where the research continues is, is getting things to the point of, of both the regulatory approval process, which takes many years, and then also, you know, understanding and, and putting that into a commercial process, which has its own challenges with regard to the speed and, and certain desirable end conditions that, that the manufacturer wants to achieve for, for maximum consumer acceptance. Well, Dr. Keener, I note that your publication will be coming out. It has been accepted in the Journal of Applied Microbiology and the title is Cold Plasma Can Kill E. coli Microbes Within Packaging, so providing a useful tool in situations of post-processing contamination according to your research. Are there any other projects that you'd like to share with our thousands of listeners that are narrowly interested in food production? Um, I will throw out there that this work and, and some follow-up studies that, that are soon to be published uh, that are under review now are, are being conducted as part of a European-funded project called SafeBag. And there's more information on SafeBag. If, if they uh, do a quick search for SafeBag food safety, uh, that will show up. Uh, because that's a, a FP7, a Framework Program 7, which is a European-funded project on commercialization. And this is the underlying technology that's, that's supporting that project. Dr. Keener, I'd like to thank you for your wonderful contribution to our program. 
and request that if you could just briefly summarize our talking points, the following uh, talking points. What are foodborne pathogens? What are traditional methods? What is cold plasma? How was cold plasma discovered? And how has research shown that it can have potential for food processing applications? Sure. The, uh, the foodborne pathogens are uh, bacteria or viruses that, that make persons sick that are transmitted uh, via food and food products, so consumption of foods or handling of foods. Traditional methods for killing those foodborne pathogens would be heat. Um, also, irradiation is another technology that's available and out there. Um, cold plasma is a ionized gas uh, where the gas itself remains at roughly the room temperature condition. However, there is molecules uh, generated via electron um, there, there's electrons that are, that are removed from some of the molecules and, and those impact others to break them into single elemental forms that are very reactive, like single oxygen, single nitrogens, and so on. The, um, the research that we've done has demonstrated that being able to generate a cold plasma uh, allows us to adjust the concentrations of these bactericidal molecules within a package, and in doing so, we can very effectively kill uh, traditional foodborne pathogens, uh, which would be the bacteria and also we're, have ongoing work with viruses as part of that. Uh, and I think the technology, the potential for the technology is um, uh, very compelling and I think very exciting from, from my perspective in that it uh, appears to be offering an alternative to existing traditional methods uh, that currently we don't have available. Well, Dr. Keener, I also note on your biography that you do provide technical assistance to food companies on commercialization of new technologies such as cold plasma, and you also provide expert witness testimony in legal cases. And uh, if you'd like to discuss those two potentialities. Um, sure. So uh, my background and experience, I've, got, um, I've been working in, in food technologies for the last 20 years or so. I do a lot of work with uh, companies from the entrepreneur starting a company to global uh, multi-billion dollar food companies uh, in evaluation and demonstration of new technologies, both as an educational, uh, working through the Purdue University here as a researcher and professor, uh, both instructing students and doing research, and then also outside, um, I have a private company, a Keener Technology, that, that works with companies in, in concert with their interest to, to move things forward in terms of improving safety and uh, quality and improving environmental sustainability and reducing water and wastewater and so on as part of an overall uh, global perspective. Well, Dr. Keener, I have taken license to post your contact information on the AME Food Testing Show site. Would you invite our listeners to contact you if they have additional questions? Sure. I would be happy to talk with them. Very good. Dr. Keener, I would like to express my personal appreciation for your appearance on today's show in light of your busy schedule and allow your closing remarks. Well, I want to uh, appreciate your uh, interest in the technology and, uh, you know, happy to share kind of what we have going on. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for the plasma technology and a lot of other exciting technologies that are coming down the road, so to speak, for uh, the food industry. And, and I think that, uh, you know, collectively as we all work towards that common goal of improving the safety of food, I, I think ultimately – we're going to be able to get there. So I appreciate the time to to uh, talk with you here this morning and uh, want to wish everyone a, um, a happy holidays and a happy new year. Thank you, Dr. Keener, and wish you a great day. And thank you again for your time and your thought-breaking research into reducing food pathogens and making food safer for all. Thank you, Annie. Have a great day. Welcome to the A.